Okay, so today I scheduled to get my hair in the front reattached again. Last time I got them reattached, the two strands were good, the retwist and everything was good, but I could tell in the moment they were gonna fall out when I washed my hair. But I'm gonna try to go to a different person and see how they do. Damn. Oh my. Well, it's pretty humid, but it's not blisteringly hot like it has been. I have nowhere to put the camera. And it's already fogging up again, dude. It looks like I'm in a dream. What the fuck? But anyway, I don't really have any way to film on the drive. I'll just see you in the salon. It's so fucked. You'll actually never guess what happened. <laughs> Literally nothing. I went there, right? And then it was my turn. Like I was up or whatever. Everyone else was finished. And then he's just like, blah, blah, blah. we go over like to the back to where the, you know, the hair washing stations are. He sits me down there, starts washing my hair. He goes away for a little bit for a second. I assume like go look at something on his phone or something at the front. And then he asked for my name, I guess to see like what I was actually there for. And then I said that I had wanted to get some reattached that were previously cut. Basically, long story short, he said there was nothing he could do, like at all. He said that if they were to be reattached, they would just fall out and that they were too short and it wasn't even worth the time, which is crazy. That kind of just makes me want to do it more. Also, peep the new growth. The new growth is crazy. This is where it was and this is the new. That's crazy. But yeah, basically I just got my hair washed and that was it. Like that was everything. At least he didn't charge me though. He didn't charge me for anything. He was just like, he had brought me back into the chair after he washed my hair. We had that conversation or whatever. He said, whatever he said. And then he was like, you're good. And then I just like said, have a nice day. And then I left. So that was a waste of gas. I got my hair washed out of it. He was very thorough, which I can definitely say. He was saying basically normally if you were to get them reattached, it would be thinning out at the root. Then he would like reattach it at the root and that you can't reattach it to the end. Even though I've seen plenty of people reattach it like at the end. I kind of honestly just want to try it myself to be real because it does not look difficult at all. I can't do that right now because my hair is wet and you don't want to use the crochet needle at all if it's wet. So when it dries, I'll probably probably attempt the procedure because now I have an excuse because I kind of already wanted to do it myself but I already had scheduled the thing so I was like let me go to the thing get it professionally done but now I have an excuse to attempt it myself thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring yet another video at this point the large majority of my experience with fragrances in general is because of Scentbird because they make it so easy to try out different things and see what you like the fragrances I got sent from them are House of Beau Lamar Modern Gentleman by Joseph Abode I can't pronounce these Initio Parfums Privis. That was as well as Solage House of Four. I thought of something. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna do a thing. <laughs> If you don't even know what Scentbird is, it's basically a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try different designer fragrances, more than one by the way, each month for only $17. You know, summer's all about trying new things and why not try something new with your hygiene? That's not a diss, but if the shoe fits, then wear it. And one of the best ways to do that is try a new signature scent. But with Scentbird, you don't need to buy a big full-size bottle and end up not liking it or get tired of it and realize you just want to switch it up. Because when you sign up, they allow you to get three new fragrances each month so you can really just see what you're into. There are over 600 brands you can choose from and they're anything from designer brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, all the way to more niche brands like Parfums de Marley, DS and Durga. I, I don't know if I'm saying any of the Confessions of a Rebel and obviously way more as the previously stated 600. Even though my viewers are like 70% guys, they have colognes obviously, but also perfumes and unisex fragrances if you want to find something in between. Some fragrances cost over $150 and others cost three to 500. So obviously getting a smaller sample size like this could be well worth it if you're trying to experiment with different things. Be sure to use the link in the description or scan the QR code, it'll be somewhere right here. And use my code Williams for 55% off your first month with Scentbird. Okay, so this is the fit that I'm wearing to the gym. I have this baseball long sleeve tee, which I thrifted. This is like my favorite uh, shirt to wear over my actual gym shirt because it's very light, very breathable. It's just a good shirt. I would wear this anywhere. The shorts, it's just these five inch inseam shorts or whatever. The actual shirt, I have um, a compression shirt. I've been wearing the black compressions for a while now. I tried tank tops for like a week and hated it. Literally felt naked. So I like the compression shirts a lot more. Yeah, we're going to a new gym today, but we're going to go to a crunch, which I haven't been to in one or two years, but it's going to be cool to go back and see what it's like there. So Kobe's never been to a crunch before and I've been to like three, three different ones, but I've been to like three different ones, but 
<laughs> I can't talk with someone behind the camera. Um, I've only once, like each time. I've never worked out there consistently because there's never been one like close by. It's always been like 20 or 30 minutes. But this one just opened up like maybe a week ago and it's like a nice $5 million facility. We're gonna see, because this whole time we've lived here, we've only went to the, um, the Planet Fitness that's like eight, six minutes away, something like that. This one's 19, it's a bit of a drive, but I've driven 20 minutes to the gym every single day in the past. I don't really care. Okay, so I'm deciding to do a voiceover for this gym part because the music was just so unbearably loud and it was, they were just blasting Drake the entire time. So obviously I was going to get claimed real bad, but I also didn't want to do like a two minute montage. I feel like that was going to water it down a bit too much. I wanted to show you guys what our sets actually look like more so as opposed to just doing a really, really fast montage, but I might still do that. This right here was too heavy. Like, I tried to immediately go up 50 pounds from the last set because I got like 16, but um, it was too heavy. So I went back down, decided to, you know, like control it more, and um, yeah, that's basically it. This is normally like what my last couple reps will look like. I try to go just, you know, knocking on the door to failure, so that's what it will normally look like. Kobe... I don't, he's actually never done, this was his first time doing incline um, barbell bench without the Smith machine with a free bar, so he did really good actually. I didn't like film it because I had to choose between spotting him and filming, but um, he did a plate on each side for like eight reps and it was moving fast, so um, I didn't know he was able to do that. But I decided to go up a little bit, just a small increment, because the last set was a bit too easy as well. I think I got like 12. Um, but I made sure when chopping up this footage to show you what the last couple reps will look like. We skipped to the end of the set, you know, it's a nice, yeah, nice grind of a last rep. And then we moved over to shoulder press. We were just going to take advantage of the fact that we could actually do standing barbell press, but we normally never would do that. We do um, seated dumbbell presses, but we had it there and like they had so many cages there. It was a super nice gym. They had a bunch of cages open. So we were like, we might as well like use a barbell. Um, I think, for, yeah, I did some push presses to, you know, force out some more reps. Um, it's kind of hard to go to failure on like a standing barbell movement because you don't want to be too unstable because it couldn't be safe or it could not be safe. But, you know, I still have to get some push presses in. Um, Kobe did this. He did that very easy. That was like a warm-up set. But this weight was good for me. I still was getting like 12 reps or so. But um, it was a good weight. Try to control it down a bit. I think later in the set, I kind of bounce it off my chest. Like, I don't go as slow. But, no, those are good. Those are good reps. Um, this is actually really good technique right here. I do push presses on this set as well. Um, you know, just leaving in the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. I actually intentionally left this in because I wanted at least to have one example of what a full set looks like. You know, so that's what this is for. And then, you know, forcing out a couple more reps. Um, the push press is an actual move, but in the context of doing a, like a military press, it's like cheat reps, basically. Um, Kobe was able to actually do this with really good form, but it was a bit heavy. So, um, he went back, actually he didn't go back down. He went over to the front to do seated dumbbell shoulder presses. Um, but after that we moved on to lat pull downs as our first, as our first back move. And, um, yeah, just warming up. This is a warm up. I forgot what I normally do. I normally do like 180 on these for about 10, um, I always try to make sure it's good form. He's warming up here. I don't know what weight he uses, actually. I think 140, I want to say. I don't know what he normally uses. I actually don't know. Um, but you can see, looking around, the gym is really nice. Uh, crunches normally are. Crunches are normally some of the best, like the best commercial gyms, um, equipment and cleanliness-wise that I've been to. Look at, the, look at his shirt. Yeah. Uh, uh, look at his shirt. That's tough. I got that... A, little bit of a while ago but i haven't filmed a gym video um but finally we get to see the shirt in action you know perfect fit you can see the rear delts you know protruding from the shirt <laughs> um but yeah this is my first working set i don't really know 
Like I can't see the weight or anything, but you can see if you look at this stat closely, it's a decent amount of weight. Um, yeah, just like everything else, I go pretty much to failure on these. It's really easy to on that pull downs. Because I don't know why, but my grip is actually really strong. I don't do any grip or forearm training, but I think just because I don't use straps or anything, my grip never really gives out on lap pull downs. And my hands don't get sweaty e uh, either, thankfully. Um, my hands never get sweaty or anything, so I can really just go until my back gives out. Um, Kobe doing his working set right here. I actually thrifted that shirt um, when we first visited when we first visited here and I don't know why I didn't keep it maybe it was too small I don't think so I think I could have wore it but it's a cool shirt bro I really shouldn't have given <laughs> like it's a, anyway um yeah I guess I left his full set in yeah um good uh good hard working intense set you know that was nice. And then we went over to Barbell Rose, once again, taking advantage of having free bars. And they have really nice, like, deadlift platforms, too. So we were just using everything that was at our disposal for the most part. Um, since we don't normally have that at the Planet Fitness that we've been going to. Uh, didn't leave in that full set. It's really just, like, whatever. It's just rows. Um, what did I do on that? I think I did a plate, just a plate on each side. He did, um, what are those? A 35? That's a 35. I'm not sure if he went down, but right here he's doing 35s. But, you know, nice, hardworking set, good intensity. And, yeah, I'm using the 45s on each side for these. I don't do these often at all, but actually the next day, my, like, the traps, my rear traps kind of, they, they were sore because I wasn't used to doing these. Um, but it was good. I like these. Uh, make, they make me feel very athletic and uh, functional. Whenever I do these, because it's not like a machine or anything, it's just a free bar, you know? And then um, lateral raises. What do I do on these 30s? Yeah, I do 30s. I've done 35s in the past with good form. I might actually start doing that again. But no, I think 30s are good. I think 30s are good. A lot of times, people on lateral raises act like they throw all the other rules of lifting out of the window, like intensity and, you know, progressive overload and pushing yourself, like, and just stick with light weights that they can do perfect you know like have perfect form and everything and form is important but you also have to have intensity and a lot of people just forget to do that on lateral raises because i don't know it's like some mythical exercise to people like you can go to failure and beyond on lateral raises like i don't know why people like look he, he's doing partials right here you know that wasn't the whole set obviously but at the end you can do partials um, I didn't leave that much of those in there, but we moved on to seated incline dumbbell curls. Yeah, I actually really, really love these. These are probably my favorite bicep exercise. Like, you just lean back. Normally, you don't move the elbows. You try to keep the elbows pretty still unless you're, like, doing what he's doing, like, going to failure. But these are insane. Like, these give you the most crazy bicep pump. Like, it feels like they're splitting off the bone in the best way. And then he stands up and gets some more, um, like, reps to failure or pass failure, I guess you could say. I don't do this. Normally, I just go to failure when I'm sitting down and, like, just end it there. But he likes to get more. These give you the most crazy pump. Bro, you can see the shoulder, like, three shoulder veins through the shirt. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, just, I think I left the full set of these in. But, yeah, normally... I think I'm doing a pretty good job at keeping my elbow, like, stable. You don't want to lift your elbow forward too much because then you're kind of using the shoulders to get it up. But it's not, it's really not that serious. Like, just lift with good form. doesn't have to be perfect. Lift with good form and intensity and you'll be fine. Like, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Um, yep. I don't know. Okay, cool. The set ended. I didn't know what else to say, so thankfully it ended in time. What's he doing here? Is he using, he's using 30s? Damn. That's actually pretty heavy. Or is this too heavy? But then we got some posing at the end. Uh, normally, I don't pose. Like, I don't go in a room and pose after my workouts. I kind of just will see what I see while I'm working out and call it a day. But for the video, I decided to pose for a little bit. You know, get some shots. The lighting was decent. But, yeah.
that was the workout. I'm back from the gym. I'm gonna shower, then eat, then clean my room. And after that, I'm just gonna watch like Full Metal Alchemist, cause that's what I've been watching, or some YouTube or whatever, and mess around with my hair and see what I can do. I know for a fact I can reattach them and make them look good. It's a matter if I can do it and make them strong enough to stay. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right now, I gotta uh, wash myself, okay? so. I'll see you guys after that. Okay, my hair looks insane. I put my hair back in order to wash my face and everything, and it doesn't just immediately fall forward, like. But where are the big five? You got one. This one is the lock that's right in the middle of my head. So I'm gonna do this one first. I'm gonna attach the longest piece to this, because if any of them were to be the longest, I'd want it to be that one. Then there's this one, this one, that's three, and then four, and I think five right here, but that's not as necessary. It's mainly these four these four is what's really fucking the game up right here so if i can reattach these four then i'll kind of be good to go and it'll look a lot better so starting with this one in the middle this one maybe put that one right there i'll come out this end right here that's strong i watched a youtube video on this okay so I think I'm qualified. Yeah, the goal is to comb it out, like comb out the end without losing too much of the hair. I think that'll be enough. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so I'm gonna comb out this end right here. Just a bit, okay? You guys are probably shaking in your boots right now. And I don't blame you. Last time I went about doing something to my hair myself, not objectively, but to a lot of people, it went horrifically bad. I also regret it, obviously, but I don't think it was anything that crazy. Like, I don't think I fucked up my entire journey. Restart, use Cantu, use motor oil. It wasn't even that crazy to me. It's not my favorite look. So, I'm gonna do it a little bit more. And then boom, I'm actually just gonna leave it like this and go about my business. So we got this one that has a fluffy end about this much is like loose and ready to be attached. Right here, we have this one with about, you see that with about that much that can be attached. I saw this in a video guys, okay? I'm gonna not only just attach the loose parts right here cause that will not work, I don't believe. You make the fluffy part go on the solid part of this and make the fluffy part go on the solid part of that one. I'm gonna do that. Well, it's not just about this, but the fact that that guy said it would have been a waste of time and that there's nothing he could have done. Like, okay, bro. I literally took that as a challenge. In that moment, I was like, okay. Maybe you can't with your 15 years of experience. But what if I watched a YouTube video, huh? And then I did it myself. What if I did that? He'd be silenced, awestruck even. So yeah, that's the plan. Now, I don't expect these locks that I'm reattaching, like the one, the four up front, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, to be as long as the ones like on the side right here. I don't expect that and I don't need that. I'd be fine if that's not the case. I just want the ones up front to be a bit longer and also to be less uniform because them being almost straight across like that, I really am not a fan of that look. So yeah, typical crochet stuff, to be honest. It's not even that, not that crazy. It's another day. I could actually be a loctician uh, if I really wanted to, I, I believe. Like, come on, bro. I already got the lock repairs down pat and I haven't even done one lock yet. I just, I don't know where this confidence to do my hair comes from. Probably because it doesn't even seem that difficult at all to reattach them. You comb out about half an inch and then you make the fluffy sides on both parts overlap. Smush them together and then just keep crocheting it until it's absolutely solid. I'm gonna palm roll it to bring all the stray hair back together. So yeah, I'm really just gonna set a five minute timer, I think, and keep going crazy on this one lock. Really just give it all my attention for five minutes straight. So I'm gonna watch five minutes of Full Metal Alchemist and whenever that five minutes is up, I'm going to do the pull test and we'll see how resilient they are to external force, okay? This is what it's looking like. I reattached it. It looks really, really good. I don't know how strong it is. I'm kind of scared to do the pull test. Yeah, I did it. This is pretty much the length I wanted them to be. I wanted them to be past my nose or like by my mouth. This is the ideal right here. I'm gonna hold this so that it's not pulling on my, uh, my scalp. But I'm gonna do three pulls with a significant amount of force. One, two, three. Oh shit. I'll take, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I did three pulls, okay? With decent strength. Now, 
I'm just gonna take my win and keep it pushing, quite frankly. Some people were actually saying that they liked the bangs. I didn't, but I appreciate you liking it. What's the second longest one? I'll do this one next right here. Reattach them right, Boom, right there. But as for now, I'm gonna go ahead and comb this out and attach it to this one right here and just do the same process, the exact same thing. The second one is finished, and this one's honestly much stronger than this one. Because this one, it's strong, it's solid, but right here I can still tell where it was attached. But this one right here, this one's like really strong, I can tell. So that's two down, what, like really just two more to go. The next one I want to do is this because it's just so short, it's so disproportionately short. But this one's a bit skinnier, so I gotta find one that matches it. Because if I have one that doesn't match, not only will it look weird, but it could also so like do damage to the root right here if it weighs it down too much so i think this one right here maybe yeah that'll be fine Okay, so now it's the next day. It's like the next night. I just got out of the shower and this is what my hair turned out to look like. But yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted it to look like. I just wanted it to be like back to maybe my mouth length. And then, you know, I can wear a headband if I want to make it shorter in the front or whatever, which I'll definitely do. Like I'm never gonna wear my hair like this. At least now I have it. And it's not as long as these, but I wouldn't want it to be that way because they're already more than long enough now. I'm just glad I have it back and it's like somewhat back to normal you know on there really well solid I've yet to wash them but I'm confident that they would stay on when I wash them I stayed up pretty much all night doing that so I was really tired afterwards so that's kind of why I'm filming this outro now instead of filming it then right after let me do a makeshift retwist real quick here to here is all new growth like there's so much and when I get it retwisted, it's gonna be even longer. It's gonna be like right there or so. So if you see me in the next video and it's like short in the front again and you're like, what happened? Da, 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 it's because I'm wearing the headband because I don't like wearing my hair like this. I know some people like having their hair all in their face, but I don't like that. And I don't want a middle part. So I gotta find a happy in between. I want something like this or this, like one of these two, but I don't know how to get my hair to look like that. But I'll figure it out eventually, I guess. If anyone knows how I could get my hair like that, then just DM me on Instagram. I read all my DMs for the most part. That's what we're looking like. They're all looking very healthy, very good. Let me do a quick 360. That's how it's looking right now. But yeah, not much more to say. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. And um, I'll see you in the next one.